I'm Teresa Dunn. I'm the Minister of Discipleship here at Providence. And with me today, I have Adam Ward, who is our Director of Music Ministries. And I've asked Adam here to talk a little bit about the hymn, Joy to the World. So Adam, let me ask, tell me a little bit about Joy to the World and how um, did it come to be written? Well, I was so excited when you asked me to be a part of this little project because I take joy to the world for granted, as I think we, many of us do with familiar hymns and songs that we love so much. So, Joy to the World was written by Isaac Watts, who was an early 18th century English congregational minister. And he wrote a collection of hymns, wait for it, called The Psalms of David, imitated in the language of the New Testament and applied to the Christian state and worship. Probably wouldn't make a bestsellers list today just because of the title. Indeed. But it included the text of Joy to the World. What he did in this collection was he took Old Testament texts and interpreted them through the lens of New Testament Christological thinking. Mm -hmm. So he took Psalms 98 and 96 and Genesis 3 and he turned them into something about the coming Messiah. It was under the heading, in fact, the Messiah's coming in kingdom. Now here's the thing, it was never meant to be a Christmas text. What? I'm telling you, it was never meant to be a Christmas text. I know that that is mind blowing because we have made it a Christmas text all around the world. Tell me more. I'm going to tell you more. It was meant to be more apocalyptic. It's really meant more for Christ the King Sunday or even for Advent because it looks toward the second coming of the Messiah, not the first coming of the Messiah. It never mentions the baby Jesus. It never mentions Mary and Joseph. It never mentions shepherds or donkeys or oxen or a stable or an innkeeper. It's talking about the second coming of the king, the Messiah. So he takes those Old Testament texts, he turns them into something Christological. And yeah, it was never meant to be something that was for Christmas. Wow. Well, thanks, Adam. Uh, that sort of throws us for a loop. Indeed. Um, well, how about the tune of Joy to the World? The, there's so many familiar um, parts to it, I feel like. There are. If, if you know anything about Messiah, Handel's Messiah, Georg Friedrich Handel, you might recognize that opening statement. Da, 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 lift up your heads in the Christmas portion. It also, I didn't realize until I did some research, it kind of quotes Comfort Ye, which is in the first part of Messiah in that, you know, coming of Christ portion, where we hear dum bum bum bye da da dum bum bum bye let heaven and nature sing. So it quotes that as well, those two things. Here's the thing, Lowell Mason, who wrote the tune, was a Handel scholar. He loved Handel, he knew all there was to know about Handel, so he basically just completely stole from Handel in those places. Um, Lowell Mason was um, a, a tune writer, a musician, who lived also in the 18th century. And he wrote a lot of other familiar tunes that we know, like Hamburg, which is when I survey the wondrous cross, or um, Royalston, which is a charge to keep I have, you know, Methodist ministers know that one Indeed. well. Um, Asmon, which is Old Four of Thousand Tongues to Sing, he arranged that. He also arranged Dennis, which is um, the tune for Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. So Lowell Mason, he's kind of a, a big part of our hymnody of the, the tunes that we know. Um, the tune that we use for Joy to the World is Antioch. And Antioch wasn't the original tune for Joy to the World because the text for Joy to the World is common meter, which means the phrases, the syllables in the phrases, it goes eight, six, eight, six. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king. So eight, six, eight, six, that's common meter. It's the most common meter. Other hymn tunes that are common meter, well, you know what? I'm not gonna tell you what other tunes are common meter. We're going to magically appear at the organ console in just a moment, and you're gonna hear some common meter tunes to which we could sing Joy to the World. So give us just a second. So here I am magically at the organ console now, and we're gonna talk about some common meter tunes that we could sing Joy to the World to, but never will. 
So the first one, the most common. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. It just doesn't really work, you know? Then there's joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Maybe a little bit. Um. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and earth receive her king. I mean, Gilligan's Island is kind of fun and jaunty, but, you know, you think about the skipper too and all of that, and Marianne, and it just doesn't work so much. So then my favorite common meter tune that we will never ever sing Joy to the World, and I'm not even going to try to play it because it just seems wrong would be, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. That's right, House of the Rising Sun. It's common meter, but we would never do it to that. So there you go, Joy to the World. You know all you could ever want to know about it. You know some history, you know about the tune, you know that it's not Christmas. It's Advent or Christ the King. I hope that your world has not been shattered by all of this information. And I hope that you take these things and ponder them in your heart like Mary did with the gifts from the shepherds. Thanks for joining us.